Ooh, the force is strong in this one. <laughs> Morning YouTube. These of course aren't X-Wing fighters. They are in fact butterfly clips. They're what you use to hold the door glass in on your Elan. And you can't buy these anymore, they're an obsolete part. And that's a bit of a nuisance because normally when you go to set the door glass off you snap this tang off the end of it. You can't buy these anymore, these are headlight bezels and these were originally made from uh, some very thin sheet steel which tends to rust to pieces. So you can't buy either of these parts anymore but you can now make them yourself for just a few pounds or a few dollars each because when I couldn't buy these parts I've made 3D CAD models of both of them and sent them away to be 3D printed. And in order to spread the love, I'm making those 3D CAD models available to you for absolutely nothing. So in this video we're going to show you what to do, how to get hold of these 3D files and how to get a set printed yourself if you need either of these parts. Now I'm going to assume you know nothing about 3D printing here, so here's a quick primer on what to expect for the un uninitiated. Now this is one of the original butterfly clips and as you can see this piece usually breaks off when you take the door glass off. This is originally made out, I think this is nylon, it's possibly a polyethylene, but anyway it's quite a, it's, it's a tough and flexible plastic. Now when you get 3D printing done you can print in almost in a, in a wide range of plastics but most of the low cost 3D printing is done in two types of plastic. ABS which you've met before when we were doing the interior trim repair, it's that sort of stuff that motorcycle fairings and some car bumpers are made out of. It's quite flexible but it will snap if you, if you, if you force it too much, it is sort of somewhat brittle. And then the other type of plastic that is commonly used for 3D printing is what's called PLA, polylactic acid. And that's got the advantage that it's biodegradable, it's from cornstarch originally. Um, that's, those two are the, the, the cheapest forms of 3D printing you can get. Now you can get parts printed in nylon as well, but getting 3D parts printed in nylon tends to be quite expensive. So with this ideally you would get the replacement for this printed in nylon. And I'll show you if you want to do that, where to go for that. If you get a few of them printed at the same time, you can get the cost down to a reasonable amount. But to be honest, printing that in nylon, even if you got about eight printed at the same time, is going to cost you about £12 each probably. If you get that printed in ABS plastic, which will do the job, it will cost a few pounds, two or three pounds, maybe five dollars, something of that order. So they're, they're your choices. The disadvantage of getting it printed in ABS is that you will have a, it's possible that you'll snap that when you bend it around to put the glass on. So with these parts, I've have these parts printed in ABS because I'm cheap but more just to actually make sure that the CAD file was was the I've got all the dimensions right with the CAD file before spending a lot of money but you can see it will bend round but if you if you if, it's, if I bend it too much there's a danger of snapping that off so if I'm putting that if you get these printed in ABS uh, what you might want to do is just put a bit of heat on that just to soften that slightly as you bend the tab round when you put go to put the glass on if you print them in nylon that'll be no problem, it'll probably last your lifetime printed in nylon but it will be a lot more expensive. With the headlight bezels, the disadvantage of printing these in PLA is that PLA softens at about 60 degrees centigrade. It's quite possible that with the headlight in this operating you'll get up to that sort of temperature. So I'd recommend printing those in ABS and just because it's a bigger volume that will cost a bit more, that'll cost round about £12, something of the order of $20 to get one of those printed commercially. Um, just to sort of compare them to the originals then, so here are my 3D printed parts and this is one of the originals and you can see that dimensionally this is absolutely perfect. Uh, so I'm quite happy with those. With the headlight bezel, this is one of the original headlight bezels printed out at the one well, of the original bezels that was made out of steel. This is about one millimetre thick steel plate which is very stiff. It doesn't really particularly need to be stiff what it does on the car but really the reason they've used one millimetre steel here is just so it's got some corrosion resistance but I think a lot of us are finding that after 20 years these are pretty well rusted through. This one's okay, I can reuse this one but two of my others were just in pieces literally. So for the 3D printed part I've actually thickened, because we're going to make this out of plastic which is a lot less rigid than, than the original steel, I've thickened the wall up here so that's a 2mm wall thickness and that means you can still get the screws into the tabs here. But enough waffling, let's show you how to actually get these printed if you want them. 
get your files, go to www.makershop.co forward slash shop forward slash one Kenobi Toby. And when you get there, that will open up images of the various files that you can download. So click on the one that takes your fancy. And when it opens up, you'll see some images of what your part is going to look like. Down the bottom, there's a bit of blurb and some other stuff. But the bit that you're interested in is up at the top that free download button and that will download what's called an STL file that's a type of 3D file that any 3D printer is going to be able to print out for you so download that to your computer the cheapest option for getting your part printed is if you have access to a 3D printer obviously use that uh, if you don't have access to a 3D printer you could join your local makerspace that's kind of like a hobbyists fabricating group where there's a few of those around the country and they'll probably let you use their 3D printer for nothing if you can't do that though you're gonna to have to pay to get it printed and the next cheapest option is to use a service called 3D hubs The next cheapest option for getting your parts printed is 3D Hubs. So go to www.3dhubs.com and when you get there go to 3D Print at the top and start a 3D print. Browse for the file that you've just downloaded, your STL file. And when you open that, that will import the file into their piece of software on the website here. All the files on uh, Maker Shop are in millimetres. So there you can see an image of the butterfly clip. Now you go to step two and just choose what material you would like to print it in. Bear in mind general purpose plastics are cheap. Nylon will be better for this butterfly clip but it will be more expensive. And once that's loaded you will be presented with a very long list of options some are very cheap some are much more expensive these are a mixture really of some of these commercial professional printers some of them are just guys with a 3d printer in their bedroom generally speaking like most things in life the more you spend the better quality the part will be but it's entirely up to you just select the one you like the look of and away you go The other option is of course just to use a commercial printing service and just, just Google those. There are all sorts of printers all over there who are only too happy to take your money and print your parts. Obviously the benefit of using a professional service is they'll have, they'll have a guaranteed turnaround time and your part is likely to be of a higher quality but your money you take your choice. And when you get your parts back, this is the sort of thing you can expect. Now, all 3D printing works by building up layers of material, so there will always be some sort of layering visible, which you can see quite clearly on the headlight bezel there. Now, generally speaking, the more you spend, the less obvious that layering gets, um, particularly if you use what's called SLS, Selective Laser Sintering, that layering will be hardly noticeable, but there will always be some sort of layering in it. It will never be quite as smooth as an injection moulded part. Now, bear in mind, these were printed as cheaply as possible, just in order to check dimensions. I hadn't screwed up when making the file so this is the very cheapest you'll get and you can see that the butterfly clip is quite rough looking but it's perfectly usable it's perfectly serviceable you can also of course just sand it to get it smooth and if you spend a bit more money than me then obviously you can get some quite high quality looking parts bear also in mind with parts like this you're never going to see them on the car I and mean, this is stuck inside the door um, card and this is stuck inside the headlight pod so really if it's functional and it's strong enough that should be good enough for you so I'll leave you with that let's just have a look at what they look like when they're back on the car and good luck with those I hope that's helped you out see you next time and that's what it looks like back on the car this is one of the ABS ones that we were looking at at the start and before I fitted this to get the clip to go around into this u-bend I heated this gently with a blowtorch um, the softening temperature for ABS is about 100 degrees centigrade so you need to put a fair bit of heat into it and then when it does start to soften it'll soften quite dramatically so just play a blowtorch over it gently until it softens then you can bend the clip round into the U-shape and then leave that to cool and it'll set in the U-shape and then you can fit it to the car. If you chosen to print yours in nylon you shouldn't have that problem, you should, they should be flexible enough that you can just bend it round on the car without heating it. Um, the other thing, depending on how accurately your printers come out, you may need to just run a 5mm drill bit through the holes top and bottom just to make sure they're 
uh, clean enough to go over the studs and maybe even ream out the big hole a little bit um, so it'll slide onto the travelling block but uh, other than that that should be you sorted out so good luck with that and happy window sliding